Right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are about to start today's proceedings. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all to Darlington Dog Show Society, Day 1, 2009. We have three groups today, Hound Group, Terrier Group and the Utility Group. And the Hound Group will be first. First of all, though, we start off with uh, the unique situation of a parade of the vulnerable breeds. First into the ring is the Otterhound. The Otterhound is another old British breed with references dating back to the 12th century. They were used in large packs to hunt river otter. King John of England hunted otter with large shaggy hounds, as did Queen Elizabeth I. The modern Otterhound has bloodhound in his background and is in turn one of the ancestors of the Airedale Terrier. Originally used to hunt otter, now predominantly used for hunting mink, released back in the 70s into the wild. Can also be known as mink hounds. These include other types of hounds as part of their packs. There are now very few otter hound packs used for hunting. Next now we have the Dandy Dinmont Terrier. Here we have a brace. One of the oldest terrier breeds often referred to as the Pepper and Mustard Terrier because of its colour and the name of the character in Scott's book seems to have finally settled with the breed should be called. One theory suggests the Dandy is made from crossing a Skye Terrier and a Scottish Terrier and was thought to have originated in the 1600s. He would go to ground to hunt badgers and vermin across the English, Scottish, border country, often in all weathers. Your Dandy Dinmont Terrier. Next up we have the Smooth Fox Terrier. Developed originally in the 19th century when both smooth and wire coated were from the same origins and classed as one breed. They were used to locate the positions of foxes when they went to ground for barking and so pinpointing the position of the fox in their tunnel for the huntsman and also in killing vermin. Believed to be a combination of the old English white terrier, smooth coated black and tan, the beagle, the bulldog and the bite of a greyhound. The breed standard was originally drawn up in 1876 by officers of the Fox Terrier Club. It was not unusual to find a smooth ring around a stable yard looking out for vermin. The Glen of Yamal Terrier. The breed was first mentioned in 1575 in George Turberville's The Noble Art of Venery and Hunting. A dog taken its name from the Glen of Imal, a region of southeast Nocnagarin in County Wicklow. It was first exhibited in Ireland in 1933 at the St. Patrick's Day show in Dublin. Originally bred for hunting badgers as well as more usual vermin and will be prepared to go to ground after quarry. The first champ show in England to schedule them was the National Terrier in 1982. Next up we have a pair of Irish Terriers originally from County Cork in the 1700s they were very much different from the other long-legged terrier the Airedale bred by men of little means the Irish Terrier was a hardy dog that could meet many criteria as a playmate for the children to a defender of property able to hunt as necessity would require rabbit and other game in World War I, the breed gained much respect as messengers' dogs, a job that they excelled at. And pictures show them with burns to their feet from mustard gas. They gained their reputation for turn of speed and their loyalty towards people that cared for them. Plus being a sturdy dog that suffered from few ailments. Next up now we have the Manchester Terrier. As mentioned in the history of many breeds, there was a smooth coated black and tan terrier. The Manchester is believed to be directly developed from that breed. It was first mentioned back in the 1500s and was particularly popular in Tudor times, being mentioned by Dr. Chaos, the Queen Elizabeth physician. The breed was used as a ratter, particularly in building to control vermin. 
Hence the breed became the ratter of choice, the most famous being Jack Black. He was the Royal Rat Catcher in 1850. The breed took the name Manchester Terrier around the 1890s. It is believed due to the dense population of the breed around the northwest of England, this was centred around Manchester, the heart of the cotton industry. Next up now we have the Celium Terrier. Captain Edwards, a keen sportsman who lived in the estate of Celium between Haverford West and Fishguard, South Wales. Bred to stabilise this terrier, it required a one essential character, that of pluck. It was used to go to earth for fox and badger or any other rodent. Breeds believed to make up the Celium are the Welsh Corgi, a Cheshire Terrier now extinct, which was a kind of small white bull terrier of colour. Tenacity of purpose and gameness, the Dandy Dinmont, the West Highland White and Fox Terrier to improve the quality of coat. It was bred to hunt with packs and today there is still some hunting in South Wales area, the Celium Terrier. Next up we have the Lancashire Healer. Believed to be a cross between a Welsh Corgi and a Manchester Terrier, it is also known as the Ormskirk Healer. The breed is said to have originated when Welsh farmers used the services of drovers to drive cattle to the northern cattle markets. It was at these markets that the two breeds met and the Lancashire Healer was born. The farmers liked these small black and tan dogs. They found that they were excellent when used to bringing wayward cattle and sheep back to the herd. They did not injure the animals in any way. These small dogs controlled the animals by administrating a sharp nip to the back of the heel. They would immediately and instinctively lie down flat so that any kick from the animal would go over their head. The Lancashire Healer. Next now we have the Welsh Corgi Cardigan. The Cardigan Corgi is a lesser known Corgi with a Pembroke attracting much attention due to its royal patronage. The breed is believed to have been in existence in Wales for over 3,000 years. It was brought in originally from by the Celtic tribes who migrated to Wales from Central Europe. The Cardigan's originally worked, original work was to go before his master's cattle herd and clear the way by chasing off potential predators, as well as trespassing herds, providing an area for grazing later. The Cardigan began to act as a herder, working behind the master's cattle and as a drover driving cattle from the Welsh farms to the English market. The Welsh Corgi Cardigan. I think finally now we have the Columbus Spaniel. Tradition has it that the first Columbus Spaniel type of dog arrived in Columba Park in Nottinghamshire from the kennels of the French aristocrat, the Duc de Nornes, during the revolution. It is widely known that these dogs continued their association with the aristocrats' houses of Great Britain, conumulating with King Edward V. He enjoyed using his Columba and Sandringham where he bred many working and show champions. The best remembered of these being Sandringham Sparkle. Clumbers work as a team taking the birds to hunters and they will track and retrieve. That ladies and gentlemen is your final vulnerable breed and I think now they shall all just go around in one big lap of honour so show your appreciation for these breeds and the owners who have brought them along today for show. Thank you.